Hey there, I'm your Rodrigo Correa from Numeca, Germany, and today we will cover a very special topic in Find Marine, Actuated Disk. When you find yourself in a situation where you want to take the propeller effect in account, but you don't have the propeller geometry, you can use the Actuator Disk model. A common application is the propulsion simulation, where we basically have a resistance setup and we add on top the actuator disk model, which will increase the computational effort by a small amount, but in return, we can access propulsion information such as thrust deduction and even wake fraction. And the usage of an actuator disk is not limited by propulsion simulations. Anytime you want to include the propeller hull interaction with a low cost approach, you can use it. Some examples are trim optimization, sea keeping, and maneuvering. In this video, for instance, you can see a complex simulation including wave generation, a rudder controller which is based on the ship motion, and the ship in an overset mesh. And just that you know, all the degrees of freedom are solved. And sure, one could add the propeller in a sliding grid, but it would impact not only the amount of cells in the mesh, but also the time step requirement for this simulation. Therefore, this is a very good example where an actuated disk makes a lot of sense to be used. Even if you have the propeller geometry, you need to think which propulsion modeling you want to use in your simulation. In Fine Marine, we can tackle propulsion with three different methods. On the left side, you see the drag-based range, which is a very simple mode that impacts the boat kinematics with no additional computational effort. One application I can think of is on the small pleasure boats, where the comfort is of a big importance and this mode will provide you information that the peer resistance will not. Then, we have the actuated disk, which is a big jump in accuracy compared to the drag based range, and we start getting very useful information of the propeller hull interactions, and as I mentioned before, the additional computation effort is minor. And finally, on the right side, we have the unsteady simulation of a propeller sitting on a sliding grid, where we're gonna get the full propeller hull interaction. In this case, it will require an additional domain with the presence of the propeller, and the computation effort will be much, much larger. In this life hack, we will only concentrate on actuated disk, but if you want us to cover propulsion simulations using the sliding grid method, let us know in the comment section. Ok, let's talk about actuated disk. What is an actuated disk? Basically, it is a mathematical model which takes in account the effect of a propeller using the so-called body force. And for our practical usage, it means that the real propeller does not need to be included in our simulation, and therefore, it's going to decrease a lot the computation effort. And what about fine marine? Fine marine allows us to determine how the body force will act on the actuated disk. And a very common choice is the body drag, where the thrust of the actuated disk is automatically updated during the computation to ensure the equilibrium of force. And in case you want to define your own custom body force distribution, well, we also got you covered. Another option is to couple our Hans flow solver with an external propeller code, and it means that the body force will now be determined by the external propeller code of your choice. And it doesn't stop there. We still have the option to enrich the actuated disk with the open water data of a real propeller, and this is a very good choice, as you can get accurate results not only on the thrust deduction, but also on wake fraction. And as you can see, the actuated disk is a very special topic in fine marine, and we need to get you started somehow. And I believe that the best example is to get started with our demo case 8. Before jumping straight to the demo case 8, let me just tell you what they are and how to download them. Basically, the demo case are public cases which are already set up in fine marine, and the idea is that we provide you the most common marine applications so that you don't need to start from scratch. They are not the most optimized setups, but they are a very good starting point when trying to learn how to run a new application. There are currently 14 demo cases, ranging from simple resistance cases to more complicated simulations such as keeping and maneuvering. And if you don't know how to download them, there are actually two ways. One way is from our online documentation, you can access it using the link on the top right side. And once you are there, you only need to click Find Marine and then Demo Cases. And to download all the demo case file, you only need to click download here. This is the first way. And the second option, again, you access our portal, under products, you select find marine, 
then the version and you find on the right side all the download links for tutorials, demo cases and fine marine installations. Now that you know how to download the files, we can start talking about the demo case 8, which covers self-propulsion with actuator disk. The demo case 8 is based on the Tokyo workshop from 2015 and it covers two cases, the case 1.1a, which is a simple resistance, and the case 1.5a, which is self-propulsion. Let's jump to Fine Marine. When opening the demo case 8, you will see three simulation setups called Computation 1, Computation 2, and Computation 3. The Computation 1 is a pure resistance case, and the Computation 2 and 3 are the ones we are interested in this life hack, which are self-propulsion cases using actuator disk. And before going through the simulation setup, let's have a look at the mesh. It's important to mention that the demo cases come with the mesh set up, but the user still needs to perform the five meshing steps, from initial mesh to viscous layer. After you perform the five steps mesh, your mesh will look like that. And this mesh has some specifics. For instance, you see that the mesh contains an initial free surface refinement, but also an additional refinement for the so-called Kelvin wave. Let me show you. If you go to Adapt, then Other Surface, we can check the internal surface used for refining the entire free surface, but also the internal surface used for refining the Kelvin wave. And what is the difference? If I expand the Advanced button, the refinement on the Z-axis is basically the same for both refinements, but the aspect ratio for the Kelvin wave is much smaller, meaning that the refinement within this region will be finer than on the free surface itself. And if you want to see the result of this refinement strategy, select the cutting plane or F5, then we see the free surface and the Kelvin wave region to capture better the waves generated by the ship. We can also have a look at the viscous layer. We just need to change the origin, in this case 0, 0, 0, and the direction, in this case 0, 1, 0. And as you can expect from Hexpress, the viscous layers are properly inflated through the whole vessel. From the bow, to the aft of the ship. And look, around the propeller hub, we can see a region with a fine grid density, right? And what is that? This is the additional refinement required for better capturing the propeller hull effect when using an actuator disk. And what about the amount of cells we need to have there? Well, we recommend around 20 cells in the thickness of the disk. And if you have any problem to calculate the required cell size on the disk, feel free to contact us and we will help you out. Now, let's come back to Fine Marine and have a look at the simulation setup. As I mentioned, the first simulation is a simple resistance case. For most of you, this setup is already known, but I want to highlight some important points. And the first one is related to boundary conditions. In Fine Marine, we suggest that you mimic the real life, where the boat travels with either an imposed or solved speed. And it means that there is no inlet, and all the lateral boundaries has a far field type with velocity components equal to zero. However, if you want to run your resistance simulations specifying an inlet, you can also do it. And the next point I want to show you is body definition. To define a body is very simple, we only need to think about the patches which share the same kinematics. In case we had a hull with a propeller, we would have two bodies, the ship and the propeller, because they have different kinematics, correct? And after defining a body or bodies on our simulation, we can move to body motion, which is one of the most important setup steps within Fine Marine. On the left side, you see a list of all defined bodies, and for each body, we specify a couple of parameters. In this case, we only have a body called ship. Under motion definition tab, we're gonna define how to deal with each degree of freedom. A common choice for resistance simulation is solving trim and sinkage motions. The surge motion will be imposed, while the other degrees of freedom will be fixed. When imposing a motion, the user has plenty of options to choose from. We can set the boat to have a constant speed, we can define our own motion law, or use a ramp to represent the acceleration phase. Cool. Remember that we are talking about ship motion, and it means that the solver needs to know about the mass distribution of your boat, and we enter this information under the dynamic parameters tab. Small hints here. Even though you are running a half a body simulation, you need to enter the data related to the entire body. And what I mean by data is the center of gravity, the mass, and the inertia matrix. Then you select under geometry 
if your hull is a half or the full one. These were only few remarks on the resistance setup. If you have any question about it, let us know in the comment section or feel free to reach us using our support email. Okay, now the most important question. How can I set up a self-propulsion simulation using actuator disk? If you already have a resistance case set up, you only need to add the actuator disk model that you can find under additional models. Let me show you. I will just select the second simulation, click on additional models, then actuator disks. Do you remember in the beginning of this life hack that I told you that Find Marine allows us to define how the body forces will act on the actuator disk? And then I mentioned three options, the body drag, enriching the actuator disk using a real open water data, and then the option of using an external code. This is where you choose how the body force will be updated. We will focus today on the open water option, which means that we'll be using an open water data from a real propeller to enrich our actuator disk. If you will visit the Tokyo Workshop webpage again and check the case 1.5a, which is the self-propulsion, we can find that the open water data is provided. And all we have to do to provide this information to the flow solver is to create a text file with an extension dot dot. And we provide the J, KT, KQ, and the propeller efficiency. Note that the first four lines have the hash in the very beginning, which means that they are comments and therefore they will be ignored. Now that our open water data file is set, we can keep defining our actuator disk. Under global parameters, we have to specify the frequency and if you want to take the tangential force in account. Under frequency, you define the body force update interval. In this case, the solver will update it every 10 time steps. And if you want to have not only thrust, but torque information out of your actuator disk, you want to check the activate tangential force checkbox. But wait, what is very, very important to know, if you are using a symmetry plane to simulate a half boat with a single propeller, you can still use the actuator disk, but the tangential force option must not be active. And what it means is that the actuator disk will no longer provide information about torque, but you can still expect a very accurate thrust out of it. And now we define how many actuator disks we're gonna have on our simulation. In this case, I only have one propeller, therefore only one actuator disk will be used. If I were to use more actuator disks, I only had to press add. Okay, then let me remove it. And now remember that we chose the open water data option, which means that we are expecting an open water data file. But in case you don't have the open water data, we can still provide it for you. Clicking this button called Wagner B series, you enter the propeller information from which you want to have the open water data. And as the button name suggests, you're gonna get an open water curve based on the Wagner B series. Before you save, you can have a look at the curve and then you apply. Now you get on your project folder a new open water curve. In this case, I will not use it because I do have the open water curve from my propeller. Then I'm gonna cancel it and I'm gonna define what is the revolution rate, if it is clockwise or counterclockwise, then we provide the inner and the outer radius of the propeller. Another important point, when you set the inner radius, you don't want that your actuator disk intersect any of the solid patches of your hull, all right? Then we define the center of the actuator disk, which is the center of the propeller, and the shaft direction pointing to the wake. In this case, it is pointing to the negative x as my x coordinate system is pointing towards the bow. Remember that I imposed a velocity to the hull and set trim and sinkage to be solved. Therefore, we want the actuator disk to follow the motion of the hull, and for that we need to link it to the body. Short question, do we always get propeller thrust, torque and propeller RPM when using an actuator disk? It will depend on the option you choose on the body force update which means that it depends on how the body force will act on the actuator disk. The thrust, you will always get it, because that's the main idea of an actuator disk. The thrust has to balance the external forces and the drag force. If you want to have the torque, you only need to consider the tangential forces. And what about the RPM? To get the information about the propeller RPM, you need to enrich the actuator disk with an open water curve. This is very important to know. 
And just that you know, when using an actuated disk, an additional file called a fourth underline AD is created within the simulation folder. It presents the time series of all the quantities generated by the actuated disk. Again, the content of this file will depend on the update force model and if you take the tangential force in account or not. Ok, we have our simulation set up, we ran it, now you want to visualize the effective wake. How can you do it in self view? Actually, there are different ways to do it, but the easiest way is to go under macros. Then there is a very nice tool called wake flow tool. And how to set it up? It is very straightforward. Here on the top, we have to choose what is the sense. So what is positive? Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? And then you define what is the origin. So if you check it, now that's going to be at six o'clock. But if you uncheck it, it's going to be at 12 o'clock. The other information is exactly as we specified in the actuator disk. There is only one additional field that we don't have when specifying the actuator disk, which is the advancing velocity. And why is it important? Well, to define the wake fraction, you normally divide the local velocity by the reference one, which is the advanced velocity. What else? Here in advanced, now we specify the number of points you're going to have in your mesh in the radial and tangential direction. Let me execute it. Look. Now we get three more views with our propeller plane displaying the axle, radial and tangential velocity distribution. Now, if you want to include the velocity vector, you only need to select which wake you want to change. Let's change the axle one, double click the velocity vector. Now you choose how you want to display it and you say vector on grid. Now the vectors are colored. And if you don't want that colored, you only need to uncheck the checkbox color. There are plenty of ways to make this plot more appealing. For instance, you can zoom it and check the size of the vectors. So you can increase it, decrease it. You can change the number of the ISO lines and so on. In case you are also interested to plot it on your own, these two you provide you two files. The first one is called wake underline flow dot dot, where we have the Cartesian points and the velocity components, the radial, axial and the tangential. And the second one, which I personally prefer for plotting the wakes, are the wake underline flow.txt. How many radius do you have? I specified 35, right? Therefore, I'm going to have 35 radius. Then for each component, the axial component, the radial component, and also tangential component, they will be actually not the full value, but the value divided by our reference velocity. And remember, our reference velocity is the one we just input in our wake to GUI. In this case, the velocity of the ship 1.18 meters per second. Then I can parse it and make it as nice as I want. And just have in mind that the tool doesn't care if the wake is nominal or effective, meaning that it doesn't care if you use actuator disk or not. If you just run a resistance case, you can still use it. Okay, and that's gonna do for this life hack. But if you still want to explore more on the actuator disk, feel free to contact us.